This is Love Notes, Daily Devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you. Our text today is from the book of Esther, chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, and chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. I would recommend that you read the whole book. It is really a, a great piece of literature. It's not a history. It's literature. It's, it's a novel, so to speak. A novel that has a point to make about God's providence. Now, there are some scholars and arguments that have happened over the book of Esther for as long as Esther has been around. Some criticize the book because it lacks religious elements. Some criticize it because God is never mentioned once in the whole book. And yet, the faith of Israel and the providence of God moving behind the scenes is absolutely unavoidable. Sometimes that's how life works, isn't it? God isn't parting the seas and creating miracles to dazzle us, but God is working behind the scenes in and through the daily things that happen, calling us to be faithful, calling us to be ethical, calling us to do the right thing. And that's what the book of Esther is about. It certainly deserves a place in scripture because it is part of how the people understand their history. It is set during the Persian rule of the civilized world. And the backstory is simply that there was a great king on the throne, uh, Xerxes, probably the Persian name, Ahasuerus uh, is another name for him. He has a queen named Vashti, and Vashti gets, well, she gets a little crosswise with the king. Read it, and you'll see what Vashti does. Vashti is another woman in scripture, although she is Persian and not Jewish, who stands up to the powers and loses. But she stands up nevertheless. So when Vashti is put aside as queen, Xerxes looks for a new queen. And there's a big rigmarole and a beauty contest and all kinds of things. And he ends up falling for Esther, a Jewish woman. She's an orphan who's been raised by her relative, Mordecai. He adopted her as her own daughter, as his own daughter, excuse me. And so we're told in the first part of this verse how Esther becomes the queen. The king loved Esther more than all the other women. Of all the virgins, she won his favor and devotion, so that he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. So Esther, this Jewish girl, this orphan girl, this girl who is of no account, is raised up to be queen of the entire Persian Empire who ruled the known world at the time. It's a reversal. It's once again how the younger ends up supplanting the older, uh, how the weak end up getting ahead of the strong. As the story continues, the plot tells us about a na man named Haman who becomes kind of the right hand of the king. And Haman hates the Jews. He hates the Jews because of Mordecai. Once Haman is lifted up to become governor of Persia, I guess, something like that. Whenever he walks by Mordecai, Mordecai will not bend his knee or bow down to him. Mordecai has one God, we imagine, and his allegiance in terms of government is to the king, not to his governor. And Mordecai gets his feelings hurt. He gets jealous. He gets angry. He gets bitter. And he wants to take revenge. So long story short, he fabricates a whole way of getting Mordecai to be condemned to death and hung on a 50-foot tall pole. And that all the Jews, because of Mordecai's transgression, should be eliminated or cast out of the kingdom as well. So Esther has a festival to honor her. The king and queen are together. On the second day of the festival, the king says to Esther, what is your petition, Queen Esther? She's been 
very reluctant to ask for anything so far. He says, whatever you ask for, it should be granted to you. What is your qu request? Even if you want half my kingdom, you can have that. So Queen Esther answers, using all the power that's come to her. She doesn't use it for herself, for her own game. She says, if I have won you favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given to me. That must have shocked the king. Who dare would threaten the queen? That is my petition. And the lives of my people, that is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we had only sold merely, if we had been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace. But no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. King Ahasuerus said to the queen, Who is it who is presumed to do this? Who has condemned my queen and all of her people? She says, Haman, the one you put in charge. Well, the king is angry. He flees. He goes out to cool off a little bit, get a little cooler head. Haman knows he's in trouble. And so he throws himself on the mercy of Queen Esther. Throws himself in a way that gets, her on his, gets him on her couch. The king comes back in and sees him and thinks there's something hinky going on. He's trying to attack the queen. And so in a turn of justice that we can only savor and Hollywood could never dream up, the king condemns Haman to death. And all of the servants who hated Haman said, well, there's a 50-foot pole available. They were going to hang Mordecai on it. What do you think? And Mordecai, Mordecai is saved along with all of the Jewish people and Queen Esther, and Haman is hung on the very pole he erected to destroy the people. Now, there's nothing in there that says God did anything. Or is there? Queen Esther stood up for her people instead of herself. And that sounds like an act of God. Queen Esther spoke up to power instead of just trying to preserve her place in life. Uh, that sounds almost Christ-like, doesn't it? Queen Esther risked everything in order to do the right thing. And that we know is favorable in God's eyes. Providence. God worked through Esther, through Mordecai, and through the king himself, who didn't even know who God was. Maybe that's a more helpful way of thinking about God every day. Not that we wait for miracles and signs that nobody can miss, but that we realize that God is woven into the very existence of creation and is always working behind the scenes to call us to right action. Amen.